Hey everyone, this is Yami, your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a very special video because today I get to collaborate with one of my favorite YouTubers. Today I am teaming up with Lisa from farmhouseonboon.com. She is a mother of six, a blogger, a YouTuber. She has her own podcast. She's even an author of her very own book, which I actually have myself and I'll link to it below if you guys want to check it out. Now the reason this is such a special collaboration is because I actually came across Lisa's channel a couple of years ago while I was hospitalized. I was suffering from a really bad infection as a result of my miscarriage of my fourth child. The infection was so severe that I had to be admitted to the hospital for several days. Now, during that time at the hospital, I spent a lot of time alone because Nelson had to be between me and the kids. So it got pretty old flipping those channels on the TV. And then I started just going on YouTube and watching videos. I started watching a lot of baking videos and that's when I came across Lisa's sourdough starter and I was intrigued. So I pretty much went down the rabbit hole and began watching all of her videos from her fermenting food videos, her cooking videos, her handmade um, textile videos. It was really different from the way that I was living at the time. It was a nice distraction during a very difficult time in my life. Then last summer, I went to a blog conference and I happened to see Lisa there. I immediately went up to her, hugged her, and told her how much I loved her videos. I probably freaked her out a little bit because I'm sure I fangirled a little bit, but she honestly had no idea how much of an impact her videos had during a very difficult part of my life. Since then, I've kept in touch with her. I communicate with her ever so often, and I've even asked her for advice on several things. And she was actually one of the people who inspired me to leave my suburban lifestyle and buy these two and a half acres with this house that I'm currently fixing up. So if you're coming over from Farmhouse on Boone, my videos are a little different. I do share inexpensive home decor ideas. I also do dollar store DIYs, but I'm also sharing the complete transformation of our home on our two and a half acre piece of land. We are actually in the beginning of it. We are currently fixing up our home ourselves so that we can create our very own homestead. I'm at the very beginning and I'm still learning a whole lot. With that being said, I have three very simple sewing projects that I created for my kitchen because we're nearing the end of my kitchen renovation. Now, before I get started on my projects, don't forget to check out Lisa's channel and her video to see what she created today as well. I'll have a link in my description box for you guys. So for this first project, I have this toaster oven on my countertop, which I use ever so often, and I can't really remove it because it's so big. However, I kind of want to cover it up, and I've had this idea of creating an appliance cover for it. I had some white scrap denim fabric, and the first thing I did was drape it right over the toaster oven. It was a square piece, and I made sure that all of the sides were draped along the bottom of it evenly. Next, I took some sewing pins and started pinching off all four corners, the same way I did with my farmhouse tablecloth. I wanted a comfortable fit, so I didn't make this too tight. This is what they should look like. They almost remind me of Yoda ears. Then it was off to the sewing machine to sew those areas I had pinned down with those sewing pins. Then after I did all four of them, before cutting that excess fabric off, I made sure that it fit just right. Then I snipped off those Yoda ears. Then after that, I made sure that all of the fabric was even all the way around. Now for the next part, I wanted to use this really pretty gray and white stripe fabric. I measured off three inches and cut two strips down the entire piece. I want this for the bottom of the appliance cover. I sewed the two ends of the two pieces together to create one large piece. 
and then I folded it over twice to create a hem down one side of the striped piece. Then I took my sewing pins and started creating pleats along this little striped piece of fabric. I love the coastal feel that pleats give to a piece, but I also kept it pretty relaxed because I didn't measure them precisely. Then I sewed the pleats put. After that I took the appliance cover and turned it right side out and then faced the right side of the pleats onto the right side of the appliance cover. And then began pinning both raw edges of the fabrics together. Then I sewed the pleated fabric onto the appliance cover. I went all the way around. I stopped just before the ends and I sewed the two ends together, cut off the excess, and then sewed the pleated part remaining onto the remainder of the appliance cover. After the pleats were attached, I flipped the fabric over and then I sewed down on the white fabric so that it didn't bubble over and kept the fabric nice and smooth. Finally, I took it to my serger and I serged the edges of where I removed those Yoda ears. I should have done this in the beginning, but I'm glad I was able to catch it. I ironed it out and then it was finally time to put it on my toaster oven. And I just love how it turned out. The cover softens those harsh lines and I don't have to look at it whenever I'm not using it. So for the second project, I had this area above my sink where you can see this really ugly light. There used to be a board there, but we took it off because it actually made it a lot darker because it blocked the sunlight. But now I can see that light, so I needed to cover it up. I had this ticking fabric that I used to use on one bookshelf that I used to have in my previous craft room. Well, this bookshelf is in a closet now, so I don't need it covered up and I had no use for those fabric panels. So I decided to repurpose them and create a cute little balance for my window. So here are the three pieces that I wanted to join into one long one. I wanted the balance to be no more than nine inches. So I went ahead and measured out 11 inches to cut so that I had enough to fold over for where I needed to put my little tension rod. went ahead and cut all three pieces. Now what's good about this is that all three pieces were already hemmed so I didn't have to worry about that part. But I needed to cut the sides of them because they were sewn. So I needed to cut one right side of one panel, both sides of the middle panel, and then the left side of the third panel so I can join them all together. I sewed all three pieces together to create one long piece and I made sure to try and keep the pattern consistent so that you wouldn't see the seams as much. Then for the top part where I needed to create the little pocket where the tension rod would go through, I folded it over once and then I sewed it down. Then I took that side again 
folded it over to create my little pocket and then sewed that part down. I ironed the little curtain, fed it through the rod, and then put it up on my window. And I love the cute little cottage feel it gives to my kitchen. And now I don't have to see that light anymore. For my third area, I had the space underneath the farmhouse sink still open, needing to be covered up. Because we installed the sink, the actual space underneath was smaller than it was before, so we could no longer use the doors that were original to the kitchen. So I had three more panels from my craft room that needed to be repurposed. I made the mistake of sewing these down without washing them first. And then after I washed them, they shrunk so bad. So I really couldn't use them for my desk, even if I wanted to. Plus they were the same fabric that I had just used on my valance. And this one was going to be an even easier repurpose because all I needed to do was remove the bottom hems of each of the panels because they already had the little pocket where I needed to run my little curtain rod through. I also didn't need to sew these panels together because since they were going to go underneath my sink, I needed a way to get in and out easily to get my cleaning products. So I didn't want to sew them together. So I folded the new bottoms down twice and sewed them down to create my hem. I ironed the panels as well and fed them through my little curtain rod and I love how it turned out as well. I was so happy that I was able to repurpose some pieces that I had used in my previous home and make them work for my new kitchen. This way I didn't have to come out of pocket for any new fabric and I can still enjoy the ticking fabric that I enjoyed so much in my previous craft room. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you to Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone for joining me in this collaboration. And if you like what you saw today, please make sure to hit subscribe so that you can continue getting videos like this. Thank you guys for sticking around and learning a little bit more about me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, adios.